four ways to move to Japan and get into the tech industry. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you're already a software engineer and you want to come to Japan and do it, this is the perfect video for you. Now, even if you're not thinking about the tech industry, maybe you want to come to Japan to work as an English teacher or something else. This video will still be really good for you because if you're going to stay in Japan long term, whatever it is you're doing, you need to set up a strong financial future. And if you're doing something like English teaching or something, that's not it. The tech industry is a really good thing for that. If you're still studying and you want to become a software engineer and you're thinking about coming to Japan, this is also a really good video for you. So let's get into it. The first one is the most obvious. It's applying for a job online. They hire you and they give you all the paperwork to apply for a work visa and you move to Japan. The whole process can take a couple of months. You'll get over there. And that's what I did as an English teacher. I've been in Japan for eight years now, and my first job was teaching English. I did that whole process. I applied for a company, which I'll show you in later in this video. I applied to a company, did the whole interview process while I was in the USA. They gave me the job offer. And then we started the preparations for moving to Japan, which can be a complicated process. And I actually help people do that. Check the link down below to work with me one on one to get over here and work in the tech industry. The most straightforward way, which might not be the easiest way, is you search IT jobs in Japan for foreigners. Most of these that are going to come up are good i've looked at almost all of these i've seen people get jobs from almost all of these some of them are better than others but there are a lot and the reason for that is there are a lot of tech jobs in japan and not enough people to do them so they need people who have the skills and if you have japanese language skills on top of that you are golden you are going to get a job over here Japan is going to have a shortage of 2.3 million tech workers in only a year from now. And Japanese people aren't going to fill those jobs because the Japanese population is declining. This is literally the golden age of tech jobs in Japan. I'm telling you, I'm calling it now. I don't need to call it now because it's like we're already here. It's, it's happening now. Just come over here and, and check it out. So let's think about two types of people one is you already have work experience but not much japanese or zero japanese skills then you're gonna have to find a company that is in all english or at least their dev department is all in english and there are companies like that or the company that i work for is a very small company all of the the language is japanese but we hired recently two guys from India who don't speak any Japanese, but they have master's degrees in computer science. So they have those skills and the, the master's degree proves those skills and they got hired with no Japanese. So it's possible these kinds of jobs are out here. If you don't have the Japanese skills, you'll probably have to look on Japan Dev or Tokyo Dev. These are the best IT jobs in Japan for foreigners because a lot of them don't require Japanese language. You can apply from overseas, they'll bring you over here. And that also means they're going to be highly competitive because the number of people who are f foreigners who are fluent in Japanese is very small compared to the number of foreigners who want to work in Japan and don't have the Japanese skills. So if you're at least mid or senior level, then you'll definitely be able to get one of these jobs. And if you need help with that, yeah, I'll help you with the Japanese resume, with preparing for the interview, telling you what you need to do in the interview, all that kind of good stuff. Just book a call with me. I've got free consultations to get started. They have 208 open jobs right now. And then the other type of person would be maybe you have Japanese language skills, 
like me, I, I have JLPTN1. If you don't know what that is, it's a, a proficiency test and it means my Japanese is good. Maybe you have some Japanese skills, your Japanese is good, but not so strong with the tech skills. That's how I was. I had the N1, JLPT N1, and I had been self-studying, a little bit of freelancing, but I was able to get a job. So you gotta have one or the other, either Japanese language skills or actual work experience, or I guess a, a master's degree in CS, like the, the two guys that we just hired. You gotta have one of those things. If you are still studying, like maybe less than a year, or maybe even like six months or less into your coding journey, and you also don't have very strong Japanese language skills, then that's okay. There are some other options, but you would really need to just get over here. And that's what I tell people if you just get over here to Japan, that's half of the battle because it makes it much easier for a company to hire you if you're here. So how are you going to do that? Well, there are a couple of other options. So that brings us to option number two for moving to Japan and eventually getting into the tech industry. Now, this is probably the easiest one. And a lot of people will laugh at this and not consider it as a real option, but come over here as an English teacher like I did. And not only me, I've met many other English teachers who came over here because let's just face it, it's a lot easier to get over here as an English teacher. Super easy. I'll show you the company that hired me first. My first job in Japan eight years ago, it was a company called Interact. I still know people who are still working there as English teachers. Interact will hire people from all of these countries if you are like fluent in English. Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, India, Vietnam, the Philippines, even Japanese people if you're fluent in English. Australia, New Zealand, of course these. So if you're from any of these countries, you can potentially get a job teaching English and it might actually be easier to get that job. If you're interested in that, we can also work together and finding an English teaching job, which would be easier. So what you do is you get that job, you get over here. So now you're here. Now you're in Japan. Now, let's say even if you already have a CS degree, I've seen people who had CS degrees or like a degree in, in game development or something, any, any kind of IT degree, they still come over here this way. I've seen a guy, a guy who had like, I don't know, a whole career in some kind of IT stuff. I, I don't remember what it was, but uh, what was he doing? Dealing with like system administration or something like that and eventually became a project manager. I mean, he had a whole career in the USA doing that and he still came over here uh, working as an English teacher first for a couple, two, three years and then got into the tech industry because it is easier to get these English teaching jobs. So you have to think about that. Like if you're just sitting around and studying and applying to jobs or whatever, working a part-time job and that's going to continue for a year or two before you get hired in the tech industry why not just come to japan now be getting a monthly salary have a good time teaching english you'll probably be in elementary junior high school or high schools teaching english have a lot of great experiences and be getting paid at the same time and in your free time continue studying your programming and applying to jobs, getting your portfolio together, and eventually make that switch into the tech industry. That's my suggestion. And for people who are already, maybe they were already considering coming over to Japan as an English teacher, I would highly advise against doing that long term. I did it for like well, I guess it was over six years before I got into the tech industry. And it's not, it's not an easy life financially. 
you don't want to retire in Japan as an English teacher. Let me tell you that. I've seen that from experience, from seeing people who tried that. It's, it's not good. So, yeah. If you're thinking about coming over here as an English teacher already, do it. Do it for a couple of years. But I call it an exit strategy. If you're going to stay in Japan long term, you need that exit strategy. You should be building up a skill that whole time while you're teaching English. And guess what? Depending on the job that you do, you might have an hour or two every day at work where you're just sitting at your desk doing nothing. I had that at my job. And you can, you could study, you could bring your laptop with you, bring a book and you can study while you're getting paid for one or two hours every day, sometimes more for some people. So just take advantage of that opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. And then you'll already be here. You'll already have a working visa that can easily be transferred over to a different company doing a different type of job. If they help you with the paperwork, it's not a big deal. So in my opinion, that's a really solid option coming over here as an English teacher. Option number three is enrolling in a Japanese language school as a student and coming over here and studying Japanese. They have programs of various lengths. Let's just open up this page. YMCA Japan. This is just one example. There are schools, not YMCA, they're everywhere all across Japan. These are the locations for the YMCA. Last time I looked, which was a while back, they seemed to be cheaper than other schools. And they'll help you find a place to live. They'll help you with the visa and everything. Uh, there's lots of cultural events, field trips, all that stuff. It looks like fun. I would have loved to do something like this. So you enroll in the language school. They give you a student visa and you enroll typically in six month blocks so anywhere from six to 12 months or some programs or longer maybe it's a year and a half or two years you study japanese language full time but at the same time you're continuing to improve your coding skills and by the time you graduate from the language school you're going to be conversational at least in japanese and you're going to be content you you would have been continuing your programming studying through that whole time and you'll probably be job ready for the japanese tech market at that time solid option if you have the funds to do it i know when i was looking at it i think you have to prove that you have a certain amount of money in your bank account like to prove to them that you're going to be able to sustain yourself while you're here they also allow you to get a part-time job, but I mean, you don't want to be working in a convenience store 20 hours a week on top of studying Japanese and programming. If you can get the funds secured, you would want to just focus on the language and programming. Okay. And then kind of a bonus option number four of getting into the tech industry in Japan is going to a boot camp over here. There is Le Wagon, which I was going to do myself. I had all the paperwork ready and was about to pay. I was about to make my, my down payment into the program when I got the job offer for the company that I work at now. Uh, just need a sip. So you could do this. They have a six month online option. So you could even do this. If you have the funds, you could be doing this online while you're working as an English teacher in Japan, or you could be doing this online while you're enrolled in a Japanese language school. Anything is possible. If you set your mind to it and you build good habits, those things are definitely possible to do at the same time. Uh, because it is a part-time program, uh, I think they said you'd be expected to spend like 10 or maybe like 12 hours a week working on this, 15 max. So you can definitely do it on top of 
enrolling in a Japanese language school or working as an English teacher or whatever you're doing. The main thing is just getting over here to Japan. I cannot say that much. I can't, I cannot say that enough. That's half the battle. You get over to Japan, that's 50% done. You learn at least in three level Japanese, that's 75% done. That other 25% is either self studying programming or having a CS degree. Like it's not that hard. Oh, well, also on top of that, you have to have coding, uh, you have to be able to pass the coding challenge, but that, that's just like a, a side thing. I think everybody knows that. So the other thing for the wagon is you, you can do it online. So you don't have to be in Japan when you do it. Um, you could be doing, I mean, if it's cheap, the, the, the Japan, the, the Japan campus, yeah, for web development, it's so cheap. Oh, is it seven months? In US dollars, the last time I checked with the exchange rate, it was like $8,000. Like that's cheap for a boot camp. So if you could work with the time that they have, I don't know if you could. I think the classes are online are like 6 p.m. in the evening Japan time. So it might be a weird time schedule for you depending on where you are, but if you could deal with that weird time, it would maybe be like super early in the morning or something. You could do this boot camp online for super cheap. Um, but the other thing I'm talking about is actually moving to Japan. Well, okay, so here's the thing. The in-person program is only two months. So if you're a US citizen, you can come over to Japan for three months on a, like a, a what is it, a, a travel visa or whatever. They'll let you come over here for three months without any kind of special paperwork. So you can come here, do this boot camp in the two months, and then have a whole month for searching for a job. And I know that's not really realistic unless you already had at least an hour, uh, at least in, unless you already had like, oh, I don't know, a year of self-study before this, maybe some freelancing work. Uh, it might not be realistic to find a job in one month, but I mean, hey, you could try and you'd be in Japan and you'd have a way higher chance than being outside of Japan. And worst case scenario, what's going to happen? You don't get the, you don't find a job in that one month. If there's no other way for you to stay in Japan, you go back and you continue applying to jobs and once you find a job, you come back over here or you find some other way to get over here after that, or you find some way to extend it, whatever you have to do. But yeah, just getting over here is the big thing. All right. So those were the four ways to move over here and get into the tech industry in Japan. And like I mentioned before, I do work with people one on one. So you can check the Calendarly link down there and schedule a time to have a free meeting with me. At the very least, I can maybe point you in the right direction. If I think you're a good fit for it and you're interested in joining, we can talk about joining my mentoring program where we work one on one. Uh, there's, there's an intensive three month program I offer where I guarantee you, you're going to get the result you're looking for. You're going to get at least a job offer in Japan at the end of that time or your money back. So definitely, if that sounds interesting to you, click that link down there for the Calendly and I'll be waiting to talk to you. All right. See you later.